about that time. I wasn't really nervous until I started to get here. Then once I got here, I got nervous. Yeah, I feel like it kind of picked up maybe towards the last third of the trip. Yeah, I did the old wrestling routine where you don't listen to like a bunch of pop-up songs. You try to listen yeah. to like quieter, put on some Morgan Wall and some country, just get the, didn't drink any coffee today, just trying to keep yeah. the anxiety down, but. Keep it at baseline. I'm excited. I think the only reason I'm nervous is it's more of a free flowing conversation and less of like a sit down interview. Mm -hmm. So there's less to know where it'll go. Yeah. yeah. But I think I think he's game for it. And I think he wants to. We wouldn't be here if, if he wasn't. So. Yeah. This is the part I get nervous about. Just the the hanging out. Just yeah. yeah. wait. He's gonna, he's gonna put that on you and then, then we'll be good to go. Right Which, where do you want to sit? I don't know, man. Right there is good with me if you're good with that. All right, stalemates, what's going on? We are back with, it, for the longest time, it was our most watched episode that we've ever done. So thank you for that. Um, Tom was early to the brand. We have some mutual friends. Shout out to uh, Ryan and Fellers for hooking interview one and interview two up. But Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith. Shout out to Ryan and uh, Adam Feller. So I appreciate you for uh, joining the show. How do, you, how do you think the last one did? You th were you happy with it? Yeah, I mean, I'm... I enjoy this. It's entertainment, but it's also, you know, an insider scoop. Yeah. I mean, it's genuine, but there's entertainment value there. And you got three cameras rolling and a fourth one that is kind of the rover. So, man, this is high, high tech. And then the mic gig is like, it's like that big. I mean, the technology just keeps getting better and better. No, it's been good. We've been growing. I think the last time that we saw you, I mean, I don't even know if we... We barely had like a thousand subscribers. Now I think we're, we're at like 3,000. So if you're watching this, hit subscribe. But uh, no, I just feel like there's a lot to catch up on. I've been trying to trying to track you down, but I wanted to make sure it was the right time. And uh, you know, since we talked last, you've won another team trophy, right? Yep. Got another one. And uh, yeah, congrats on that. How's that feel, by the way? Feels good, but then we got beat by 55 points in the last one, so. Yeah. You know, the most recent one. Uh, Did you celebrate the first one, though? Yeah, our guys earned it, and they definitely um, were recognized, and they moved on pretty quick. But um, I think that's what you do anytime you're wired that way. You move on quick because there's a lot more to do. And the biggest thing after the title was, um, in 21, was just making sure that... Um, we knew who was coming back, why they were coming back, were the reasons the right reasons, and then, you know, plugging everything in that way. So, you know, with, you know, we had some, we had a seventh year senior. Shout out. And then another seventh year senior, yeah. Ironman and Kemmer, that both came back. And then we had, you know, three or four six year seniors because of COVID. So, a lot of good things, a lot of good things happening. With those six and seven year seniors coming back, obviously towards the end of last season, they got injured and stuff like that. And I felt like when they were, it was kind of coming out that you guys were injured towards the end of the year. There was some people saying there was like ducking going on and stuff like that. And the internet's going to do what they're going to do. It doesn't matter, yeah. To you, do you even no, care about that? No, because you look at our track record and the track record is intact. Um, the bottom line is, as you do the best thing for your individual, it's not popular. Do you think that's easy, um, number one, for our athlete to come to terms with that? And then number two, the program, me, has to go to the head table to the Big Ten tournament director and to give that information. And there's no way that's fun. And the criticism can come where the criticism comes from. Um, but they don't know. They don't know. And I'm not talking about the casual fan. Of course, fans are going to be polarizing. They're gonna, you're going to have the Hawk fans that are unconditionally on board. You're going to have the Hawk fans that question things. And then you're going to have the rest of them are haters. Um, and the haters, they don't know. They don't know what's going on. They really don't. And the bottom line is a lot of those haters, and this is where maybe you, you asked me in the beginning if there was anything 
on or off limits. Well, I'll just stir the pot a little bit here. And I, I, I have found out in the last 8, 10, 12 months that the haters are paid by the opposition. By the, so who are we in competition with? In Division One wrestling, think about that. They're paying haters to stir the pot. We know that. We know that for a fact. Now we know it. So you're like, how can this be so red hot, like a doggone lightning rod against us? That's why. Why do you think that they're paying media people to do that kind of thing, just to kind of I distract think you guys? Because, because we mind our business so much, and I don't know, but I'm speculating. I think we mind our business so much, and we really don't get, like, in, in, in the arena of retaliation, like we don't respond to it. Right. We don't, we just, you see us respond to it, we don't respond to it. Um, I don't know what's going on. The only reason I know what's going on is because people in this hallway follow it and they put it in front of Terry and I when it's relevant. And so, you know, that's the only reason I know is because of our assistant coaches who follow it. And we don't respond to it and so they gotta stir it up even more. Yeah. Maybe, but I don't really care. I don't really care, but it is funny. And I love it that they spend their resources on it. I love it that they spend their energy on it. It's yeah. so fun for me to know that. I, you know, I saw you're, you're the one who did the press. It wasn't your brother, right? It was you. You did the one where you said that, you know, they're getting paid to do propaganda and things like that, right? It was this impressive. Is the second time I've said it. I don't remember where I said it the first time, but where was that? Do you remember? Oh, I don't remember. I think it was a... Uh, yeah, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. But I just thought it was um, it was interesting to hear you say that. And then there was people come out afterwards and say, like, well, you know, can you can you touch upon that? And I guess, you know, that's what we're doing here today. Um, one thing that I want to know is when they were saying they were ducking and stuff like that, how bad were some of those injuries that, you know, like, obviously we saw Ironman, what happened to him at NCAAs. I mean, he, he could barely even Ironman. stand. And, 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 and really, I can't talk about it because of Privacy Act yeah. issues, the, the law. Um, but Ironman, you know, legitimate. And really, for me, you don't, like, have, like, categories of injuries. It's can you go or not? Right. And is it smart to go? And when it's not smart to go, you don't go. And again, look at our track record. And I am getting defensive here. And the reason why I get defensive isn't for me, because I really don't care because you know, our motives are pure. Uh, the reason I get defensive is because of a guy like Cassiope. I mean, it was legit. Because of Ironman, because of Kemmer, because of these other you know, issues that are coming up. Um, I will get defensive when it comes to defending our guys. Yeah, I respect that. I think a lot of people respect that too. And if they don't, like you said, they're just kind of... It, it doesn't matter. Either way, it doesn't matter. We, we operate how we operate. Yeah. And we don't, we don't give explanations for it. Um, we don't have to. Our administration knows what we're doing. Our roster knows what we're doing. You know, our best fans trust us. And our fans that maybe don't trust us and want more insight, that's good too. That's great. If you're a Hawk fan, I'm good with anything you say. You can be critical as a Hawk fan. I'm good with that. Just so you're a Hawk fan. The other stuff, nah, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep spending resources on the mouthpieces. I love it. Yeah, Rat Bastards, all right? The, the documentary, that was the clip. I uh, like yes. that clip. We use that clip all the time, by the way. Um, congrats on that, too, by the way. The documentary, I don't know if you know this, but it broke all the streaming records for Big Ten Network for an original program. So how does that make you feel? I heard those um, whatever, um, and it, it's, it's good. I mean, it, it shows that people crave wrestling content. Um, the wrestling is really moving up on the Big Ten Network. And we're starting to get credit for it. Um, and I'm not talking about shows like that. I'm talking about, you know, dual meets. Um, you know, there was a weekend where uh, Michigan, Penn State wrestled, and then we wrestled Ohio State back to back. I mean, that's awesome, like, to capture audiences. Mm -hmm. So the Big Ten Network, um, the leadership there, they should get credit for um, producing things that make more sense now as far as holding the viewer um, for consecutive events and I mean people will sit in their chair all, all night and watch Penn State and Michigan and Iowa and Ohio State 
Um, and even more than that, I mean, the Big Ten has 14 schools and they're all strong. They're all strong. Um, so the leadership of the Big Ten Network has to get some credit. Yeah, I mean, the documentary to me was great. I feel like we kind of, it was kind of, they talked a lot about stuff that you guys, you and your brother have talked about in the past. Do you get tired of bringing up the same stuff all the time? I mean, no, it's hard for me to take compliments, um, period. And then when it's on, you know, a, a show where, you know, a lot of people are watching it, it's even more. And it's almost self-serving to me. Um, and especially with my mom being so proud. Um, but, you know, moms are proud. Moms are proud people. They're proud of their sons and daughters. And, uh, but that doesn't mean that I'm not uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable listening to my mom, talk about, talk how about. great we are. Yeah. And, um, but it was real. That's a real show. I mean, that wasn't, we didn't hide a whole lot. There was no filter. There was no filter there. Yeah, no, I loved it. I mean, I've watched it a couple times now. I've watched the Terry Doc a couple times now. I think it's all good. I like the little sound bites and stuff that that you got. Like every time, I feel like you guys do one of these interviews. There's like something new that people, the fans, like to. Does that get to you? Do does no. these guys tell you those things or not? No, you mean like, am I over the line? Is that what you mean? No, I mean just like, um, what are some of the quotes that you said that like it just fires people up? You know. I, I, here's the thing. It's true. It's true. And you know what? We got the intelligence to prove it. We got the background. We have the research to prove it. And so when we say that there's really people out there that are miserable where they're at and they would cut their left arm off to be here in Iowa City working with this program, that's true. And I know it's true because I've been approached by people to consider them for jobs, for appointments, for um, anything that they can do to help make this program better, 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 better. And it's true. Yeah. Do you feel like right now more than ever is like, I feel like it's always been Iowa versus the world, but I feel like right now more than ever, it's Iowa versus the world. Do you feel that or not? I mean, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's always been that way. Um, I don't know if it's that way now. I know how um, I feel. Um, I remember when I competed for Coach Gable. I know how I felt. And it feels like the whole world's against you. Um, and it feels like the whole world's still against you. But the thing is, is we got some great people. We have some great, great fans and donors, supporters, administration. We got a great roster that comes to work down the hall there every day, pass through those doors into the wrestling room, and we got great staff. Um, so it, it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, when I wake up and I'm, you know, apathetic about things, I'll be done coaching. Mm -hmm. And so far that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just signed a pretty big contract, probably one of your, um, probably one of your biggest contracts ever i'm assuming we just did i don't know did you watch the video that we did about your salary did not. No, that's right it's fine i did not that's fine go watch it uh but you know i broke down your contracts throughout the years and what i wanted to do was kind of point out why you know it's not like you're getting paid the big bucks just because if you know they like you right obviously there's something there and my point of the video wasn't necessarily the athletic success because I think we you know you guys can go look up on track and find out how many national champions you've had how many Olympians have gone through these doors and everything like that but more so from the business side of things um, is what I was interested in and one thing that I noticed was from the time that Zaleski was here to your first season the fan attendance doubled and then it just kept going and going and I think correct me if I'm wrong internet I'm sure Jason Bryant if you're watching this you'll correct me but you've been the highest attended dual meets like per average per year like every single year that you've been here are you aware of that i am aware of that we sold last year out in season ticket sales i mean it wasn't even thousand something yeah. i mean um and that's a tribute to um our guys it's a tribute to our administration it's a tribute to how we run things you know being good isn't good enough and you have to be great. And if you're not great, um, you have to strive.
for that and you have to operate like that and we operate like that so uh, what you say is is I would agree with what you're saying um, um, the business side of wrestling I don't quite call it the business side of wrestling I call it the you don't let anything slip there's nothing that just because it's in the shade a little bit and it doesn't the sun's not shining on it as much it's still important what do you mean um, things that don't seem important to the outsider, it's important. You don't let things slide um, just because they might not be getting as much attention. So something that's off to the side a little bit, um, you still got to put full effort into it, make it sure that it's as best as it can be. Um, for instance, I talked about our staff. I didn't mention our staff. We have the best athletic trainer in the, on the planet. His name is Jesse Donenworth. He's got a PhD and he doesn't act like he's got a PhD. How can you beat that? You know, n nothing worse than a PhD guy that acts like he's got a PhD. Yeah, yeah. facts. And so facts. that's what I mean. I mean, our athletic training, there's a lot of athletic trainers that would be good, yeah. but we got the best. And that communication is, is very thorough. And the reason I bring that up is probably because it's relevant this year with how much that we have had to deal with these injuries um, and he might be a little bit you know under the radar as far as people do they really know who our athletic trainer is well I don't think that it's a secret but I don't think he's as popular as say Ryan Morningstar for good reason maybe um, doesn't mean he's hiding it's just what's interesting but just because he's off to the side a little bit doesn't mean that he's not high level and I mean the highest level. So that's what I mean, that's an example of that. Same thing with your strength coach, very important. Same thing with relationships with our administration. I feel like too, when you go to an Iowa meet, there's always like a level of entertainment, right? So like you have the grapple on the gridiron, you got a contract after that, that was a big deal. 2012, you brought in the, well, I guess I'm, I'm jumping around here. 2012, the Olympic team trials came, brought in like 5 million for the community, something like that. That's what I read, I don't know if it's true. Then this comes in, and then in 2016, you bring the Olympic trials back. Yeah, so, you're kind of always building up this. Okay, but then look at the trials, okay? 12 and 16, Josh Hamburger. I mean, Coralville, Iowa City Visitors Bureau guy. He gets credit. That relation, without that relationship, you don't know. You don't, I, I don't know if we would get it here. Um, you think it always should be here? Huh? Should it always be here? I'm saying that if we want it here, we have the community, we have the administration upstairs. Our program definitely wants it. The World Cup's going to be in Coralville in December for two years now. And that's because of Josh Hamburger and his team, Luke Hughes, Nathan Eichhorst, the, the entire Visitors Bureau um, people over there in Coralville. Um, that keep upgrading events to bring them here. We're bringing international events here now. Um, it's huge, and so that's what I'm talking about. I mean, the general fan, they, they wanna see um, the wrestling, but there's so much more that goes with it, and those relationships are important. And so we put a lot of energy into it, and that doesn't mean that we agree on everything. It doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. What it means is, at the end of the day, there's, uh, an understanding that the motives for the decisions we make are pure, whether we agree or not, and then everything else is confidential. Like when, when, when we talk to Josh Schamberger, that doesn't go out to, I don't tell everybody how that conversation went. They don't need to know. It doesn't need to know if there's disagreements. And so now you're talking about more inner workings, and so now here's a glimpse of how we operate in here. And I talked about it. Um, we do operate in our own arena in our own business um, and it drives people crazy because they want to they want to and and that's that is one of the biggest principles with me is if you're in this inner sanctum there can be no like chirp chirp on the outside casually it is it's implied tight. it's tight Great word. It's implied that there is strict confidentiality. Trust me, I've tried, dude. I've been calling people, hey, you know anything about this? And no, I'm just call me. I don't do that. Call me. Because I'll say, hey, I'll tell you, yeah. and you can't say nothing. That doesn't do your show any good. Yeah. But then I get to test you, too. How's that? Yeah. No, I'm done. Hey, I'm solid. Ask, you can ask some people. I, I All right, well, next time you call me in, All we'll right. do a trial run with All it. Right. How's that sound? Yeah, let's do it. 
I feel like with you, like you said, you don't really address the haters or anything. You ever feel like it'd be easier if you did or not really? No. It makes it worse? It makes it, it's no, it's no interest to me. Yeah. Is there a time where you spoke about something and you're like, man, I wish I didn't do that? No. Um, I've been through some issues. Um, when Gilman left, all right, that was an issue. I can tell you that Tom Brands and Thomas Gilman are good. We are good. I can tell you that. Happy for him? Yes, of course. Of course. Rooting for him. Rooting for him. And the reason I bring him up is because there was like this, um, even some of our best supporters were like, you should address this. And I'm, I'm not addressing it. I had a private conversation with Gilman. I know what was said when he called me. I know how he felt about me. I know how I felt about him. I know what he said to me. I know what I said to him. It was emotional. And it hurts that he left, but he did what was best for him. And if there's whatever out there that keeps things going, where there's you know drama or whatever, whether we're starting it or whether he's starting it, it doesn't matter because, again, it's entertainment. It's entertainment. And it's competitive. So I'm glad that you see it as entertainment, too, because obviously it's serious. Like, it's these guys' dreams and their, their life goals, and it's your job. It's your career. But, you know, I think sometimes we do lose sight of that entertainment aspect. And I think sometimes there's this relationship between the fans and the athletes and coaches that kind of that line gets misconstrued and, like, I told you last time when I was State fan, but at the end of the day, I have a huge high respect for Iowa and you personally and your brother and everything like that. And um, it's cool to hear someone like you and the status that you're at say that, you know, that's how you see it. It's kind of entertainment. Yeah, and the bottom line is, is when, when people make decisions, they do what's best for them at the end of the day. And that's what, that's what happens. Do you feel like at Iowa with how much – success a lot of your athletes have had um a lot of them go on to be coaches and you know high school coaches college coaches olympic coaches everything like that you feel like once you're gone from here it's hard to like keep everybody happy once they leave and or is it like once you're off the island you're off the island i think that when you are focused on winning and remember i left here remember terry brands left here and people forget that they don't realize that Terry, we were on the other side. Terry was at Chattanooga. I was at Virginia Tech. They don't realize that we were on the other side. And the thing is, is you're so focused on doing exactly what you're doing here that it didn't matter. It didn't change. When I was at Virginia Tech with Wes Hand and Doug Schwab, it was the same. It was, the, it was us against the world. It really was. Problem is, we weren't on enough people's radar to where they really cared. Some people's radar, but not enough people's radar. Recruited the number one class in America, first year there. So, what am I trying to say? I'm saying that when, you know, is it? Are you, do you focus on keeping people happy? I mean, they should be so focused on their job that it's just it's just natural. It's natural that you're not gonna have the same relationship. Are you kidding me? You're going to have the same relationship with somebody that was in your inner, inner sanctum. They leave, and they're, they're competing, and there's a lot of confidential stuff out there. You're going to have a relationship with those people? I know right now an example where an alum who's coaching somewhere else, they burned, they burned the program they're working for down to help the alum. I know that for a fact. Okay. I'm not going to say names. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you off the record. Yeah, that's fine. But my point is, is that there should be so much loyalty involved and so much focus on wherever you're at that why are we worried about, you know, drama and rinky-dink things? Because really, I love you the same. It's I, there. I, I it's love just you not, the same. It's, the love's there. You're just kind of, you're focused. I mean, it's just the way it is. I mean, we're, we're not going to engage in relationships that, are going to break the, the barrier of trust, to break the barrier of confidentiality. That's everything. And the thing is, and think about this, I don't know if I said this on your show or not, um, but when you really think about accountability, it's loyalty. And when you think about loyalty, it's accountability. And, and, and I, in, in the dictionary, I doubt they're synonyms. I don't know, type it up and see. 
Um, but they are to me. Because if you're not loyal, you're not accountable. Because that's the number one thing. That's the number one thing is you have to be loyal and you have to be accountable. So I'm accountable. It means that I'm loyal. It just goes without saying. I deal with it often, often. And you hear about, oh, you have a, an issue with so-and-so. And I'm like, where is this coming from? And then two and a half months later, you figure out, oh, it came from you know, some chirp chirper that was in your inner sanctum. Hey, listen, you have a conversation. You can't do that. You can't talk about what we talked about to the outside. You can't do that here. It's not going to happen. Um, all right, we'll stay on that topic. Uh, brotherly love, the U and I fans, they want, they've been asking for a dual meet between Iowa and you and I for years. You think that's that ever- still going on? I, yeah, like, I've seen it. I've seen it around. Do you think I that... I uh, know what happened. Schwab knows what happened. Yeah. We have different views on what happened. And it was not as they say. It was not. Okay. Also want to talk about the Iowa State duel this year at the end there. There was some drama. Were you there? I was there, 100%. And uh, from your perspective, there's a, we did a show afterwards. We broke it down everything. We had a lot of fun with it. But, uh, you know, I want to get your perspective of what you thought went down at the end of that. So for me... Our guys should have been in the locker room, the bench. It was starting to get chippy. And if we would have been in the locker room, it doesn't go down. It just, things boiled over. And when things start going like that, it happens fast. It's like a firecracker going off. And before you know it, you're in the middle of it. And not proud of it. Um, should never happen. It did happen. Sometimes it happens in sports, sometimes it happens in other things in life. Uh, you learn from it and you move on. I loved it, by the way. And, and then the, the other part of that is, is that that team point that they took away from us was one-sided. And it, there was a reason that it was one-sided. And I know the reason, and I'm not going to say it, but we were gone. We were out of the arena when that point, team point was taken away. There were other people at the head table that were lobbying that weren't even on that coaching staff over there that were lobbying for that team point to come away. And the referee took the team point away because they were lobbied. And if you look at the video, if there's a camera somewhere in Ames, Iowa that kept filming when the arena started to empty out, you will see what I'm talking about. All right. So how's that? I'll break it down. No, I mean, I, I thought it was super entertaining. And, like, I know you can't say this and maybe you don't feel this way, but I had people that were like, I'll tell you what. I have a client um, that is just an Iowa State fan. He's not a wrestling fan or anything like that, right? But he, he went to that duel, and he was like, that was insane. And I try to explain to him that stuff doesn't happen a lot, right? But then what happened when Iowa-Penn State happened? He called me. Hey, can you get me a ticket? I found I found him two tickets, but in my opinion, like that inner, like that true emotion, that stuff. I know, like that's the stuff that you're gonna get yelled at by the AD or whoever. But that's entertainment. Well, first to me. of all, our admin, our administration, Gary Barton, and my direct report, Barbara Burke. Um, when that stuff happens, we are on the phone with them as we get on the bus. They're <laughs> like, "Hey, you're gonna hear this," yeah. and, yeah. And, and then they always they're even. They're even. You know why? I've been here for however many years, 16 years. You know, I, I think that there's a little bit of um, they trust our ability to run the program, um, but that can never happen too. So they trust our ability to run the program, but that thing got snowballed, and you know it shouldn't have happened. But we don't, you know, you, you know, we don't need to have our guys out there in that last match. You know, go to the locker room, and and I'm not blaming them. I'm blaming the it was a volatile environment. Yeah. Do you and like it though? There was I mean, a little spark and then some gasoline got thrown on it. Don't you think it's better now, the rivalry between Iowa and Iowa State than ever in terms of like, you know, competitiveness, entertainment? Like, do you enjoy that? I think I do enjoy it, but I think it's competitive with everyone. Right. I mean, everywhere we go, it's that way. It's, it, so, yeah, it's competitive and that's the way it should be. But we go to Lehigh and we get that. We go to Indiana, we get that. I mean, there's someone there that wants our head on a stick. 
And that's why you got to put the other guy's head on a stick. You can't wait to see if he's, oh, is he really, is this for keeps? Oh, oh, oh I better pick it up. It's for keeps. It's for keeps. When you step on the mat, it's for keeps. So, yeah. Did you see the clip, the you don't like tough wrestling clip? No, what's that? I didn't hear what you said. I said, did you see the clip where uh, they caught, I think it was you on camera, maybe it was your brother, but uh, it said, uh, you don't like tough wrestling, that clip. Do you remember that? No. No? Where was that? Um, this would have been the COVID year. So there was no fans and they had the mics on the cameras and stuff. And then uh, obviously you could hear you guys probably more than usual because there wasn't the crowd noise. And the term that went pretty viral was, I believe it was you saying, you don't like tough wrestling. I don't know if, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, we say a lot of things. Yeah. No, I thought it was. And, and I'll tell you what, we get a lot of things sent back to us. Do you think a lot of people don't like tough wrestling? Um, no, I think that we have very worthy opponents yeah. that are game, that are ready, that are, are coming after us. Um, absolutely don't think that our opponents are pushovers. Yeah. What do you think is next for Austin DeSanto? I think he's going to compete. Um, I know he's staying here and continue to be entertained as you watch him. Um, Spencer Lee's medical red shirt, good to go? Is he going to be he, good to go? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, the, I'm not going to talk about certain procedures that were done, but um, he's as advertised still. Mm. Okay. Uh, June 24th, we do this thing called Stalemate Street League. We're about to have our third. It's a pay-per-view event. We do, like, one match after another. Alex Meyer competed on one last year. Yeah. He did well. He won. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, and his brother, too, right? Yeah, and Aaron Meyer. There we go. Who would you wrestle? Pick, you got to pick somebody. You. Me? Yeah. Okay. I, I, let me see your other ear. Yeah. yeah get your if, you feel, if you feel right here. Is there a little bit? Hard, yeah. Just a little bit? All right, well, a little we're going to blow that ear up. Right. We're going to get a, get that baby to blow up. Well, wait. Uh, you name the weight. I'll go wherever. <laughs> I'm going to weigh in with my clothes on because I'm small. So, No, but I think uh, anything else you want to get off your chest? I, I appreciate you for taking time to do this. No, this was uh, all addressing the haters, so that's a little bit different. Yeah. I mean, you went through, Yeah. we got to do this sooner Yeah. so we don't have to like, I think deal we should with do stuff a yearly... that was like last December. Yeah, well, I, I had stuff to. Stuff that was last. I've been keeping notes for like two, a year two, and a half. I mean, you brought up something from 20, like, 20 freaking like 15 or something <laughs> yeah, yeah or actually 20 hell 2012 maybe i mean they the people they see the the accolades and they see everything like that i just want to give you an opportunity to get everything out hopefully this is it we love our fans we love our administration my welcome here absolutely all right i appreciate you uh for doing this always absolutely yeah. thanks coach appreciate you it. asked me if i remembered you of course yeah. i remember you yeah I, I just always go to places assuming they don't know who, who we are, what we do, and try to reintroduce. Ryan Smith, he set that you yeah. know that one up, and Feller set this one up or helped. Yeah. But you you know you you can you're we're in man, all me right. and you we're in. All right, it's all good. I just want to stay on the good side. I think that's it. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, hit subscribe, subscribe to our Patreon, three dollars and ninety nine cents, cheapest Patreon in the game. Uh, Tom, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.